Good morning, Interweb World Builders Log 11. In today's video, we are going to rift apart our supercontinent that we created in the last video and simulate about 100 million years of evolution on this planet. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take our supercontinent and split it into two because we're going to rift it apart. And the way we do this is we select our supercontinent. So you hit F on your keyboard for choose feature. Click on your supercontinent, then come over to the menu here on the right and hit clone feature. This clone is a continent, so we'll place it in our continents folder and hit OK. And now what we've done is we've created a copy of our original supercontinent. You can see that down here. We have two copies of continent ABC. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit V on my keyboard for the move vertex tool. And I am going to click and drag these points down to match our rift. Okay, and so here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to hit I on my keyboard for insert vertex. And I'm just going to input a point here. And then I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hit X on my keyboard. And I'm just going to delete all of these extraneous points. Okay, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and just tidy things up a little bit. Cool, so now we've created this half of the continent. I'm going to hit F on the keyboard to choose feature. And again, over in this right hand menu, I'm going to click edit feature or control or command E. So this new bit of continental crust we've created, it is not called continent ABC. This will be called continent A because it contains only craton A. In the next menu down here, it was not created in the distant past. It was created at the moment of rifting. So as per the last video, in this instance, it's a thousand million years ago, and it'll continue into the distant future. And its plate ID is 100 because Craton A, the, the plate ID of Craton A is 100. So everything there is fine. So I'm going to go close, and then I'm going to repeat that process to cut out the other half of the continent. So I'm going to hit F on my keyboard to select our original supercontinent. And again, if you're ever unsure as to what you've selected or can't select the thing you want to select, pop down here to this menu and it'll help you out. Okay, so I'm going to go clone feature again. This is a continent I'm creating, so it goes in the continent folder. Hit V on the keyboard to move vertex, and once again, match up the rift. And again, you don't have to be massively precise here. Just get it looking somewhat precise. Okay, so hit F on the keyboard. Find that bit of crust that we've just created. So I'll pop down to the menu here and it's the one we created a minute ago. Precisely, I'm gonna hit edit feature. It is not continent ABC, it's continent BC because it contains Craton B and Craton C. It was not created in the distant past. It was created at the moment of rifting. So that's a thousand million years ago in this instance. And its plate ID is not 100, it's plate ID because we don't want it to move with this craton. We want it to move with these cratons. So I'm gonna choose the plate ID of the big one here. I'm gonna say 300 and then I'm gonna hit close. And then the final, final thing to do is hit F on your keyboard, go back to your original supercontinent. So that is supercontinent ABC, hit edit feature, Keep everything the same, but go down to the valid time section here and uncheck distant future and say that it ends at a thousand million years ago. So the idea being that at a thousand million years, our supercontinent, it ceases to be because it splits into two and we go close. And hopefully we should be able to see, you can see the drop off in opacity there. At a thousand million years ago, we have three items here. We have continent A, continent BC, and then the entire continent ABC. And then if we scroll forward, that entire continent ABC is gone. And we're left with just the left half and the right half. All right, that is how to split a feature. Let's now begin to move it around. So to do this, we need to open up a plain text editor. So on Mac, I use text edit. On Windows, something like Notepad++ would work. Anything that's a plain text editor. And what I want you to do is I want you to type 100, space 0, 0.0 space 90.0 0, 
space 0 0.0 0 0.0 three space three zeros in a row and an exclamation mark and we'll just make that bigger and then I want you to copy this put on the next line and replace this 0, 0.0 with 1000 and I'll explain why I'm doing this uh, in a second 1000.0 and then if you want, you can space things out so everything kind of neatly matches up. As long as you've one space in between each of these elements, you're gravy. Okay, so once you've got that exactly, copy this again. And in my case, we're dealing with three cratons, so I just need to make three copies or two additional copies. But in your case, if you're dealing with the 812 recommended cratons, you're going to have to have 812 copies of this. See, can I make this bigger? Hold on, just to make sure everyone can see this at least somewhat clearly. So, what this is, this column here, this is plate IDs. This column here, this second column, is timestamps. So, 0, 0.0 is the end of the simulation. A thousand million years ago is the start of simulation. If your simulation is longer or shorter, that would need to be changed accordingly. These three columns here, these are coordinates they store the location of the continents as we move them around. And this column here is the conjugate plate ID. Think of this as a linking column. So if you want one craton to move in tandem with another craton, you drop the relevant plate ID in here. You'll see it in action in a second. Then you have an exclamation mark and thereafter you can put in any sort of comments. Uh, the exclamation mark is mandatory. You can't, G plates will crash, or not crash, but it'll like get angry at you if you don't have an exclamation mark. Even if you don't want to comment, you gotta have an exclamation mark. Oh, and it's worth pointing out that G plates reads everything backwards when it runs the simulation. Just something to be aware of. It'll become more relevant in a second. So plate ID of 100, which is this fella here. For him, because he's not moving with respect to anyone else, or at least I don't want him to move with respect to anyone else, everything here is fine. So I'll put in a comment here saying that this is Craton A at the start of the simulation, and this stores the data for Craton A at the end of the simulation. Again, G-Plates is reading backwards. Then our next Craton is 200, plate ID of 200. All of this is fine for now. So, Craton B at the start of the uh, simulation. Craton B at the end of the simulation. And then plate ID 300, which would be this fella here. Oh, sorry, 300. Everything here is fine. And so this is Craton C at the start. And Craton C at the end. Now, we said in the last video that we want this craton and the associated continent crust to grow to go this way, and we want these two to go this way. So that means one of these is going to one of these cratons is going to follow the other. So let's say our big craton is our main craton, and we want craton with the plate the craton with the plate ID of two hundred to follow this chap. So we go to our two hundred plate ID section, and we say, "Hey, will you please follow?" plate ID 300. So your motion is based on the motion of what's happening here. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. Plate ID, timestamps, coordinates, linking, comments. And the final thing to do here before we save is uh, I, I like to put in these line breaks just so I can visually see how many cratons I have to see I have all the right things. But uh, G plates is going to have a small conniption if you leave these in. So you're going to have to delete those. Otherwise, G-Plates will shout at you. And no one wants to get shouted at by a plate tectonic simulator. So with all of that done, I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to save this in my G-Plates folder. And I'm going to save it specifically as a rotation file. And then I'm going to hit save. Brill. So let's minimize that. And I'm going to go to where, that, where that's located. So we have our rotation file. You notice here that this is a plain text document. It cannot be a plain text document. So right click, get info. This process might be slightly different on Windows. I don't know how it works, I'm sorry. But either way, what you're looking to do is you're looking to change the extension of the file from txt to dot rot to make it a rotation file. Hit return. And then are you sure you want to change the extension from dot txt to dot rot? Yes, use dot rot. If it's not dot or OT, G plates ain't gonna read it. All right, with that done, 
we can hop back into Gplates, hit Command M to bring up the Manage Feature Collections. And what I want to do is I want to open a file. Going to find where I stored that .rat file and I'm going to load that into Gplates. And assuming you've done everything correctly, you shouldn't get any error messages and there should be a rotation file up here. So basically we've just given code to Gplates to be able to track the movement of plates. I know, horrifically obtuse. If this was a consumer uh, application, it would simply be a case of like putting keyframes in the timeline, but it's not, so we need to go through this. Obscure scientific software for the win, am I right? Okay, now for the good stuff. What I would like you to do is I'd like you to go up to your uh, time frame here and I'd like you to skip forward 50 million years. So in my case, I want to go to 950 million years. In general, it's a, it's a good idea to work in 50 million year chunks. That amount of time is uh, large enough that you don't spend the rest of your life doing this simulation, but also small enough that you don't skip over a bunch of details. You can work in smaller time chunks. Like if you're doing a very complex, um, like say there's many bits of content colliding with one another, you could slow it down to like every 10 million years or so. But in general, work in 50 million year time chunks. So with that done, I'm going to get you to hit five on the keyboard to bring up the pole manipulation tool. And from there, hit F to choose a feature. And let us choose a feature to move. Let's choose this chap here. Now I want you to hit O and uh, go up to the top right. O, o is the, uh, what is that? The move pole menu. Go up to the top right of the move pole menu and click enable pole. And you should see this thing up here. Beautiful. Then I want you to hit P for the Modify Reconstruction Poll menu. Snappy title right there. And I want you to go up here and hit Highlight Children. Now, to move things in Gplates, you switch between the O menu, the Move Poll menu, and the P menu, the Modify Reconstruction Poll, and you use those in tandem to move stuff. So check it out. If I hit O for Move Poll, I can click and drag this poll down here. If I hit P then for the modify reconstruction pole, this will move the continent. This allows me to click and drag the continent, move it around, but only in a circle around said pole. You see that? So you could like do something like this, then you could pop back to O for move pole, and then you can move the pole again, say over to here, then you can go back to P and rotate it around that pole if you so desire, and then hit back, go back to O, move it into here, etc. until you find a position you like. And once you've got a position you like, you can go apply over here in the reconstruction poll menu. So necessarily you have to be on the P menu. All right, uh, obviously this is a little nonsense. So I'm gonna hit reset rotation. The key kind of thing to visualize here is that if the poll is far away, and if I hit P on my keyboard, the rotation is kind of like linear. See, it's gonna go around like this. It's not really gonna travel north or south. And the closer the pole gets to the object, the more it's kind of rotational and the more it kind of moves up lines of latitudes. And the pole can be right on top of the continent and it's purely kind of rotational then. So again, moving between O and P, the menus O and P, or the menus triggered by the shortcut keys O and P will allow you to move continents in any way you want. So I'm let's let's do it for real now. So I'm gonna go O and I'll move this up here. So I want this chap, we said he would kind of move down this way, which is like southwest or so. So I'm thinking, imagine there's a big circle here. So I would imagine that my pole should be somewhere up here. So I'm gonna move my pole somewhere up there. Then I'm gonna hit P and I'm gonna try that. See, do I like it? So it is going southwest. It's probably a little bit much for my liking. So I'm gonna reset, gonna drag the pole around a little bit. Very much trial and error this until you get something you're happy with. Maybe it is something like this. Yeah, maybe that's actually a nicer movement, I think. And this is all just kind of like artistic interpretation, what you think looks like a cool movement. I'm gonna go with, yeah, something like that. I think that looks neat. Uh, once you got that, hit apply. All of this, don't touch it. It's auto-generated by Gplates, hit okay. And boom, we have moved our continent. So if we scroll, scroll through this, we should be able to see it nicely animate out to where we moved it. So from, from the supercontinent at 1,000 year, million years ago to 950 million years where it rests in its final position. Brilliant. How cool is that? Make sure you go back to 950. You need to be really precise about making sure you're at like either 
the very start of your time step or the very end. If you're sloppy with the timeline, weird things can happen. So I always try and make sure, I'm always glancing up at the timeline and making sure I'm at the exact date I want to be at. Now, the cool thing about this, the cool thing about using G plates is that it's not just simply like a, <laughs> a really inconvenient way of animating low poly things. We can use some of the like mathematical tools to kind of bring a sense of realism to what we're doing. So once you've uh, decided where your content's going to go, hit command shift K to bring up the or command or control shift K to bring up the kinematics tool. So this basically measures what your continents are doing. So we're dealing with this uh, continent here that has a plate ID of 100. So I'm going to pop that in here, plate ID of 100. And I want to measure stuff from the beginning of the simulation. Um, we'll, we'll say all the way to the end. Everything else is fine here. And then I want to check velocity magnitude. Once I got that, hit update and it gives you a speed graph of how fast your continents are moving in centimeters per year which is really useful for tracking realistic plate motion. So if I check, there's my 1000 years. So end of the simulation thus far is about here. So during that course of that uh, time period, the continent is moving at 1.97 centimeters per year. Now, is that realistic? To answer that, we can go to World Building Pasta's wonderful blog. Links will be in the description to this. And we have like a little speed chart here. So if you have a subducting ocean, you can expect maybe eight to 20 centimeters per year. If you're dealing with a recent subduction collision, about six centimeters per year, an active margin continent, about three, and a passive continent, less than one. But, but like, what do these all mean? So as a shorthand, think here, old India, current India, current South America, current Africa. So check this out here with India down here, about 90 million years ago. There's a big old subduction zone up here. So all of this old ocean is being sucked away and that's forcing India to travel up this way. And note how quick it travels here. See, it's really, it's really kind of zipping along real quick. So, cause that subduction zone is sucking it in. That is this subducting ocean. So India would have been moving at about eight to 20 centimeters per year. Ancient India. So current India, is where it has collided with Asia, and you'll note that it kind of slows down here. So if you have a recent subduction collision, so you had a subduction zone, a continent or microcontinent came racing in, then collided with some land, everything will slow down to about six centimeters per year. So active margin continent, again, think modern South America, is where you have a continent on an active margin. And an active margin is where a continent is next to a plate boundary. So if you have a situation where you have a mid-ocean ridge, a continent, and then a subduction zone along that continent, you can expect that plate to be moving at about three centimeters per year. And a passive margin continent is kind of like a plate that isn't really moving. Like all plates are moving all the time, but obviously some barely move and some move lots. And a good example of that, like I said, is Africa. If you note here, Africa is basically, apart from up here in Europe, it's basically spreading in all directions. So it's kind of not really going places. And so its speed is fairly low, about one centimeter per year. Now for us in our simulation, you'll notice that this here, because this continent is going to go that away, this is going to be our mid-ocean ridge. We're going to have a continent and we will eventually have a subduction zone here. So we are basically creating, and this is how the simulation will kind of nearly always have to start. We are creating an active continent margin here. So this continent should be moving at about three centimeters per year. You don't need to be precise, just somewhere in the ballpark. So for me, I think this is a little bit slow, 1.9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click off this. I'm going to make sure I'm exactly at the correct time frame. I'm going to hit P on my keyboard and I'm just going to drag this a little bit further out. Not a lot, just just a bit. And then I'm going to apply that. Doesn't matter. Don't worry about any of this. Hit OK. Uh, Command Shift K and I'm going to update this. So now we're at 2.3. We can go a little bit more. So P on the keyboard and dragging it out. I'm just going to leave the pole where it is. I could be moving this around if I want, but I'm not, I'm not that bothered. So hit apply. Doesn't matter. This is all fine. Hit OK. Command Shift K, Command or Control Shift K, update 3.1. Cool. All right. So that's about 
the expected distance that continent may cover. So let us now move this continent. Hit F on your keyboard to choose a feature. There we go. Hit P on your keyboard to bring up the pole manipulation tool. And now I'm gonna move this. Again, I'm thinking that this is probably going this sort of direction, like northeast. So I'd imagine the pole would need to be somewhere, possibly the same place. So I'll move the pole uh, using the shortcut O, go back to P and click and drag. Yeah, maybe something like that. Let's hit apply. Okay. Command shift K to check our movement. Now this time we are dealing with, again, we've just kind of assumed uh, our big craton is the kind of main plate ID. So I'm going to put that in, plate ID of 300 and I'm going to update it and we have 1.19 centimeters per year. So that's a bit slow. Let me move it again. I kind of want to move that pole, hold on. Yeah, something like that perhaps. Command shift K, update 2.6. All right, 3.4. So we're, we're higher than three by a fair bit, but that's okay, 3.4 is fine. All right, so let's scroll back in our timeline and let's see the animation. Cool. Okay, so one thing we should pay attention to here, if I just scrub through this manually, you'll notice everything's fine up until 950 million years. And then this happens. All the continents just come back together again, which, you know, just fun times, really fun. So what we need to do is we need to like manually tell G plates to please don't do that. Uh, because again, G plates is not meant for usability. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find my rotation file uh, where I saved it and I'm going to open it. And if you have a look at this, this is cool. We can see, oh, sorry, sorry, my bad, sorry. We need to go down to command M and we need to save everything. So we have to save all of the, that rotational and uh, translational data into the text edit file we created. So we'll click save all changes and we'll go close. And now I'm going to go look for my rotation file and I'm going to open it in my text editor. So the cool thing here is that we can see that G plates has updated this file. So let me just put in some line breaks so we can see exactly what's going on. Notice that G plates has automatically inserted a uh, line of code here at 800, at, sorry, 950 million years. It's recorded the position of our continent. And it's done the same thing here for plate ID of 300. So create on uh, C, 950 million years, we have this position. Cool. So what we need to do to stop all of the mad drifting that G plates does, uh, we're going to copy the last entry in the simulation. And remember G plates read stuff from the bottom to the top. So this is the first entry at a thousand million years. This is our last entry, the entry that we've created. So we're going to copy that and we want to paste it above it. Very important, has to be above it. And keep everything the same, but just replace the time with 1.0, all right? And then I would label this uh, drift correction, just so you know why the hell that's happening. Uh, we don't need to do anything with plate ID 200 because it's just following the big crate on here. It's just following everything that's labeled plate ID of 300. So we don't need to worry about this. Here we do need to worry about it. So we need to copy this. And we can paste it above, very important, and replace 950 with 1.0. And we'll call that drift correction. And while we're at it, we should probably say, make a note in these comments that this follows Craton C, follows C, just to make it clear. All right, get rid of the line breaks. Otherwise, G plates will have a hissy fit. Save. Then back in G-Plates, hit Command M to manage feature collection. And G-Plates doesn't know that something has changed. So we need to just reload that rotation file. And now what we've just created is in G-Plates. So if I scrub through here, we'll see that it holds. And then only at the very, very end, it snaps back. So technically this is like a 999 year simulation as opposed to a thousand year simulation. And there's I don't know, there's little we can do about that. At least I don't know how to fix that. It's annoying, but here we are. Okay, so next up, let's start working on some 
ocean crust. So go back to the start of your time step. In this case, it's the start of simulation. Uh, I want you to hit F on your keyboard. Um, and I want you to choose your rift, the initial rift. If you have problems selecting it, pop down to the menu here. And we have rift at a thousand million years ago. Select that guy. And then I want you to go up here to the right and go copy geometry to digitize tool. And then hit the keyboard shortcut M. Alternatively, go over here to digitize new multi-point geometry. And it's basically turned our rift here. It's created a copy and turned that copy into a series of points, all right? Very important. Now we're gonna go create feature and we are going to find flow line. Tracks plate motion away from spreading ridges over time using half stage rotation. We don't need to worry about half stage, what half stage rotation is. It's not important. Hit next. From here, keep this the same, keep this the same. Enter in the adjacent plate IDs. So adjacent to this line, there is this plate ID of 100. So I'll put that in here. And then on the right here, we're again, we're going with the big plate ID as being the important one. So that's a plate ID of 300. And we will call this flow lines at 1000 million years ago. They will go on to the distant future, uh, but they'll be created at the moment of rifting. So that's a thousand million years ago. And just a quick note here, it says left plate ID and right plate ID, but it doesn't have to be left and right. It's just adjacent. So like if your continents were splitting, say north, south, like these two were going this way and this chap was going down south, you just enter in say north plate ID here and south plate ID there. It's just adjacency. It doesn't actually matter about absolute direction here. Um, so then once you got all that, hit next. Wonderful. Now here, here we need to worry about this. We need to hit add. And what I want you to do is go down to insert multiple times from where it began. So it began at a thousand million years ago. And then after that, everything else is fine here. Don't touch that. Just hit insert and you'll see a bunch of times, timestamps put in here. You don't need to worry about what those are. We just need to have them. Hit OK. Then hit next. Uh, and then create a new feature collection. So go down to create and save or select create a new feature collection and go create and save and save that feature collection as flow lines. I can't type apparently and save. And now we can close this. And what we get now, if we've done everything correctly, is we should get this. Ooh, isn't that pretty? So a couple of things here to note is that flow lines are really useful in tracking good plate motion. Like even though you, you might have the like correct speeds, you might be doing like unrealistic maneuvers and flow lines are a really good way of telling that. So for example, in general, most of the time, though not always, adjacent flow lines here, they shouldn't cross each other. If they do, you're potentially doing something wrong. Again, most of the time. Also the flow lines shouldn't intersect continents. Again, most of the time, if they do, you might be doing something wrong. So it's a good way of tracking realism. And the second thing is you'll note here that if you can see these yellow dots here, these are halfway between these lines. It's like the midpoint. That is where our mid-ocean ridge is. So you'd think that the mid-ocean ridge would be at the point of rifting, which we've marked here in red. But because these continents are moving, won't be moving at like identical speeds away from one another, the mid-ocean ridge necessarily, you know, because it's a mid-ocean ridge, will have to like move to compensate that. So you can use, use flow lines to track where your mid-ocean ridges precisely should be, which is kind of dope. Um, so once we have that, I would skip forward to 950 million years to the end of your timestamp, hit F to choose a feature, and I would click on, is it the bottom flow line? Yes, or is it, is, is it any flow line? Oh, I click any flow line. If you've done that correctly, these should gray out and one of them should be in white. That's how you know you got the flow line. Alternatively, down here at the bottom, select flow lines. From there, I want to go to digitize, or not digitize, copy geometry to digitize tool. And then I want to hit G. Now, if like me, G plates won't let you do that. You keep getting an error. Just select it manually from the sidebar here. Digitize new polygon tool. And what we're going to do here is, so it has taken the mid-ocean ridge and it's drawn a line and it's set up a polygon for us that we're going to complete. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw it uh, towards the coast here, or 
draw it at the coast here to create our first section of newly created ocean crust. Very, very exciting. So I'm just going to do that. Very, very simple drawing. We've already covered this, so not much to talk about here. I'm just going to trace the coastline here. Okay, and we don't need to worry about the end because G-Plates will fill that in. It's showing us a ghost line. Okay, once we got that, hit create feature. This is oceanic crust, which it's not letting me choose. Thanks a million. Oceanic crust. Description, oceanic crust. Illuminating. Um, now, in terms of plate ID, we want to give it the plate ID of the continent it's stuck to. So this continent here has a plate ID of 100, so we're going to give the ocean crust a plate ID of 100. It's beginning time, it wasn't at a thousand million years ago, it begins at the end of our first time step, so at 950 million years in this case, and it'll continue into the distant future. And its name will be Ocean Crust 950. Beautiful. Hit next. Don't worry about any of this. Hit next. And then you will create a new feature collection, create and save, and we'll save that new feature collection as Ocean Crust and then hit save. Cool. And what we can do is we can come up here to the layers panel. If you don't see it, hit command L, command or control L. We'll twiddle down the little menu here. We'll go to fill polygons and we will fill it with something with a very low opacity. There we go. One section of ocean crusts done. What we have to do now is repeat the process for the other side. Again, you don't need to be mega, mega precise here. It's fine. We're going to go create feature. Same thing again, ocean crust. This time a plate ID uh, will give it the plate ID of 300 because attached to the continent whose primary plate ID is 300. Starts at 950 million years. Cool, continues in the distant future. And it's also ocean crust formed at 950. Um, a couple of people pointed out that like there might be naming conflict here. Like, you'll have a bunch of features named in the exact same way. That is true. That is not a bug, it's a feature. Feature. Don't worry about, like this won't cause any errors or duplicates to form or whatever. So if you have a bunch of ocean crust formed at 950 million years, that's fine. Label them as such. It's good to date them. All right, don't worry about any of this. Hit next. And then we're gonna save it into ocean crust. I know, create. And it will grab the plate ID color of the main continent. Cool, All right, let's see how that looks. Beautiful. And now you can really see the mid-ocean ridge how it's moved off from the initial rifting point, which is kind of dope. It's also worth pointing out that like at any given moment in this simulation, there's obviously new crust formed here in this new ocean. And then like we move it forward, be like a little bit more here, but it'd be so impractical to like smoothly animate those things using this method. So we just kind of like leave the ocean empty until the end of a time step and then pop in the new ocean at the end. Just FYI. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to save up everything. So save all changes, close, and then I'm going to go to file and save project. Now what I want to do is I want to move forward another time step. So we're going to move forward to 900 million years ago. And we're just going to repeat this process. So I want to create two slabs of new ocean, basically. So five on your keyboard to bring up the pole manipulation tool. I think that's what it's called. I can never remember these tools names. Yes, pole manipulation. And then I want to hit O uh, and again, switch between O and P to move stuff around. So let's move this chap around. So F on the keyboard to choose him. O, we'll keep the pole where it is for now. And then we'll hit P and we'll move this guy around. So let's move him out to here, say. All right, and we'll go apply. All right, doesn't matter about any of this, hit OK. Beautiful, Command Shift K to track our motion. Plate ID, we're dealing with this continent again, so it's gonna be plate ID 100. Uh, everything else is fine, update, and now you'll see that there's kind of two sections here. Our first section, we're traveling about 3.1 centimeters per year, cool. Our next section is about 2.6. It's a little bit slow, so I'm going to just drag it a little bit further. Doesn't have to be the exact same speed, obviously, because these things can like, Slow up or speed down, depending. 2.8. Yeah, that'll do. I think that'll do for me. Let me have a have a look through the simulation. Cool. Okay, back to 900. Very important. Be really precise about 
always being at either the beginning or the end of your time steps, of your 50 million year time steps. I'm gonna hit F or five on my keyboard, first of all, for the pole manipulation tool. Hit F to choose feature. I'm gonna choose this consonant. And then again, switch between O and P to move stuff around. So I'm going to, I'm gonna say that maybe this chap, instead of like continuing this path here, maybe he levels out a little bit. So I'm gonna drag this pole more to, we'll say here maybe. Uh, and I'll drag him along. So if we do something like that, what does that look like? Apply. And you can see the flow lines can really help you uh, determine what's going on. Do I like that? Yeah, probably. That's fine. Command Shift K. Now we're tracking a plate ID of 300. And we want to update. And oh, he's dropped an awful lot. So he was 3.4, now he's 2.2. I'd like to keep that a little bit more similar. Uh, so let's try something like, mm, no. Cool, 3.2. That's nice. Kind of like that. Okay. And again, I'm looking at my flow lines and my flow lines aren't overlapping. Cool, very good. And again, we can see that the mid-ocean ridge has shifted from where it originally began. Okay, so let's go make some new crust. So F on the keyboard to choose our flow lines. Same thing as before, copy geometry to digitize tool, hit G. G plate shouts at you, so manually select this chap and then trace our ocean crust. Now this time, we don't want to go to the coastline, we want to go to our older ocean crust. Ocean crust. Grand, just like before, plate ID. It's stuck to the continent with a plate ID of 100, so we give it a plate ID of 100. It was created at the end of our current timestamp, which is 900. And so it is ocean crust at 900. Hit next, don't worry about any of this, hit next, and then put it in the ocean crust section and go create. Beautiful. And then same shtick again. Now at this point you might be like, who cares about Ocean Crust? And you can totally kind of ignore Ocean Crust if that's not uh, your bag. But the cool thing about doing it in these little segments is that you can eventually at the end of the process get G Play to color the Ocean Crust by age. So you can end up making maps that look like this. So it's kind of like the red portion here would be our first timestamp, then the orange would be the next, and then the lighter orange the next, and the yellow and the green, etc. So you can kind of make really cool maps, really cool like tectonic maps. Uh, of your world if you do it this way. All right, and let's check to see if everything's working okay. So I'm gonna go back to the start of my simulation and hit play. Class. Now, mid-ocean ridges and the spreading associated with them is only part of the equation. Like if new ocean crust is being created here, old ocean crust has to be destroyed. So that's where subduction zones are gonna come in and by extension, volcanic island arcs, etc. But I, I wanna keep these episodes fairly bite-sized. So I am I think I might call it here for today and we'll look at subduction zones and island arcs next week. Okay, that is that for today. Thank you so much for watching folks. If you got any questions, leave them in comments and I will see you next week. Until next time. Edgar Allison.